On this episode, we talk video email, Facebook notes, and Eeyore employees. Yeah, that Winnie the Pooh shit. This is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 132 of the Ask Gary V Show. So I, I really enjoy the uh, random tweets and Instagram comments, Facebook comments of people missing the show. That makes me happy. Uh, obviously, I'm in the midst of some vacation time. This is kind of a working week vacation, spending it with my family, but in the office today. Uh, I will be back in the office next Wednesday or a night. Are we taping on Thursday of next week? So we'll get one more in. So it's gonna be a little sporadic here. The the heart is going to grow very fond as we uh, are in a little bit of a hiatus as I take uh, family time. I do feel itchy fingers. Itchy fingers. I do feel itchy fingers to possibly have uh, some of you guys come up and visit me out east. One, I think we may have to actually work on the book a little bit and do that day and then maybe you can schlep along and we can bang out a, a, uh, an episode uh, on location. But for the most part, I I appreciate the momentum. I'm really excited uh, as we get back into full swing. Uh, We will be very focused on football, talk on the show, get get ready for it, Uh, and uh, and those things. The other thing that really excites me, India, is that I see you have your shirt, which really is cool. You don't have yours. No, I took it with me. Uh, and my dad stole hit mine, so he now stole I it. yeah he no I gave it to him, but it sounded <laughs> cooler to say stole. So India, oh and by the way, real quick, some of you have been posting photos of you wearing it, which I like, which is a lot of fun. Uh, keep posting them. We will keep showing the Vayner Nation in their show shirts throughout the episodes over the next ten or fifteen episodes. So India, let's get into the sh- show. Show! <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay. First question is from B. Lloyd. B. Lloyd. He's a lady. Um, B. Um, Lloyd. <laughs> B. Lloyd. B. Lloyd asks, how do you handle Eeyore employees, the ones that always sound like they're whining and pessimistic? <laughs> uh, we fire them. Um, because energy is something I value tremendously and no question, if you are dragging down uh, the team, that is a heavily, not having the smarts to do the work is actually viewed as a better option than being Eeyore and woe is me. Um, I'm sh- look, we are 550 deep now. I'm positive as people are watching this from Vayner Media saying, yeah, but Ricky is really Eeyore. You say you fire him. Why has Ricky been moping for six months? I'm sure there's a couple people sneaking through with woe is me, but the truth is, I heard a story this weekend uh, from my mom. We had an employee that was friends with, oh, my mom's friends with his mom and she told me a story that uh, the doorman and the door team men at say that they know who the Vayner Media employees are versus not just by the pep in their step when they go into the building and they're happy and they're always smiling. I think we have a pretty good uh, good atmosphere here. And so I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm very 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 uh, affected by the atmosphere and the energy of my own company. And since I'm the CEO, I. Uh, I try to create an environment that allows me to most do my, my thing and I think um, companies are disproportionately affected by the top five to ten people in a company. It's stunning if you even look at the Apples and Nintendos and Budweiser's. I mean, it's incredible how a small group of people really dictate the outcome and of course everybody's an impact but for me, if I'm not in a good mood because somebody's moping, well then I, that's a problem. There's a negative ROI there. So, you know, the truth is we try to understand what makes them unhappy. Now, now again, moping is different than being an introvert or quiet. You know, you can be quiet and focused on your thing. Uh, that's very different. And I want to make sure and make a big point here that I actually stunningly overvalue quiet, focused. I always worry that people at VaynerMedia um, don't realize if they're an introvert or quiet or focused or headphones on, never really interacting. We have such a culture of, of intermingling that 
I, 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 it's, I would even argue that I value them, not more, that's not fair, I just value them for what they are. I don't try to change people for what they are and you could bring enormous value to this company by never saying a word or you can yell, like Gabe, 24 seven and bring value. All of it in between really matters for me and so let's make sure that as you're watching this, if you're auditing your five, 10, 15, 500 person company that you're not digging through and misjudging, moping and just quiet or quiet and focused or introverted. Like those are tremendously valuable things. That's how they concentrate and get their job done. Moping is Debbie Downer. I think it's more Debbie, you know, like Debbie Downer, like this sucks. Like try to walk around here for more than 20 days in a row saying this company sucks. Try. That is, that's not gonna fly. You know, being focused, maybe not being the most social flower and going to every, you know, happy hour and like high-fiving everybody when you walk through here, that's more than fine. That should be acceptable. That is acceptable at the highest levels. But saying this sucks, the client sucks, this work sucks, this sucks, this sucks, just doesn't work. It's too much of a downer. So how do we deal with it? We try to cut it out. It's cancer. Straight up cancer. Cut the cancer. Um. This is cancer. I hope it's not. (laughs) Glenn. Glenn. It's the Snapchat. Glenn. Ask him. Glenn asks, is the Snapchat Discover kind of like billboards? There for everyone to see, but people's attention is elsewhere. Uh, No, I don't think, Glenn, that is the case. I actually think it's more like the Facebook news feed. I think it's there uh, and it's in the front of your eye and based on the data of people clicking, Clearly the content there is valuable. Uh, I think the, the thing that you need to understand about Facebook, excuse me, Snapchat Discover is it is content, it is not ads. A billboard uh, is an ad and you and I and Alex, let's show Alex because the shirt he's wearing just needs its own attention today. Uh, you know, so two days in a row we wore that shirt? No, Alex, no, what the, oh no, God, God. Uh, 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 Snapchat Discover is content. When you click that, you know, ESPN or Cosmo uh, or the Snapchat logo, you know you're about to get content. You're not gonna get ads. Uh, There'll be some ads mixed in. That's a very different value proposition than a billboard. And we've been all kind of trained to know that billboard doesn't bring me any value. It's trying to sell me something. Versus like TV and print and radio, the reason we tolerate and still enjoy it is okay, I'm gonna get something of value. I'm gonna have to suffer through being sold to, which is why technology shifting away from that is the big rub that I talk a lot about about, but the Discover platform for, for me is a, a, a belief that it's there. As a billboard, sure, it's in your face, it's there, but what is behind it is the variable and if they program it correctly, Daily Mail, all the people that program there, or the partners, Daily Mail, Cosmo, ESPN, or Snapchat itself, if they program successfully, you'll go there, a la NBC, ESPN, a- ABC, you know, a and E, when Walking Dead is what you program and people want to go there, they'll go there. When Schmuckamamugga, TV show that nobody wants to watch is there, you don't go there. So the content is the variable. Knowing that there's content behind that makes it very different than a billboard. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, from Zoltan. Zoltan! <laughs> <laughs> that one deserves that. That's the most, you know. Um, Zoltan asks, what do you think about the revamp Facebook gave its notes platform? A medium contender maybe? Zoltan, um, first I feel like Zoltan and I should try to take on the world. I feel like there's, <laughs> <laughs> let's team up, kill the world. Uh, truth is I haven't dug deep, you know, obviously I've been checked out for the last uh, 48 hours uh, with the fam and uh, notes kind of hit out. Obviously I got pinged by a lot of people here, especially because I've been pushing the long form thing. We had a little bit of a conversation. Andy mentioned that it's a link out thing. I haven't really looked yet. Uh, so the answer is I can't fully answer this. Help me here real quick, India, because I know you had to look at it. Like, it, Andy mentioned that it's linked out. So when you post it, it shows up as like a link. Right, opinion. kind of like, 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 like if you did YouTube or GaryVaynerchuk.com. Yeah, yeah, but it actually stays within Facebook. Got it. So our point of view and why we talked about that is when you guys see the box image and the headline, you know you're leaving a Facebook environment, that creates a friction point that the long form post does not. But I would say we'll probably even, you know what, let's t- test a note today. Uh, and we'll, we'll follow up on 133, 134, 135. I, I do think it, I, look, I think Facebook has a very clear plan. Let's be the layer on top of the internet itself. So if anything works, YouTube video, medium blog post. If anything works, let's have our version of it and let's keep everybody in our walled garden 
because we'll make a lot of money if we do that. And AOL is the only other company that ever had that kind of ecosystem in the late 90s, mid 90s, when people were scared. To, I was scared to go to the World Wide Web. There was a button up there and it was like the World Wide Web, forget it. I was in an AOL world. I'm like, that's spooky. You know, I'm staying in here, it's safe. And uh, Facebook doesn't have that advantage. People are more educated, they know the web exists. But in a mobile first world, in a Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp world, that's why they offered three billion for Snapchat. If Facebook owned Snapchat right now, they would own the entire, Alex even got excited. And he keeps it chill. I mean, he said, Psh, I don't know if you heard it. They would own the ecosystem. So they're three fourths of the way there. are some other players, but YouTube, there's other players. But uh, I, I think Facebook's plan is obvious. And I think in general, it's very interesting to watch them navigate. I think it's proper for maximizing business. It's why I'm very bullish on the company. It's why I haven't sold a single share of the stock. I bought a private before it went public, not a share. Uh, and so um, I'm a big believer in it. Video time. She Customs, <clears throat> producer. Hey, Gary V. Travis here. I first want to say thanks Travis. for all that you do with the Ask Gary V. Show. Most definitely be buying the book when it releases. Question for you is you talk a lot about the use of Twitter native video, and I can personally say I've seen a lot of really great results with engagement. It almost got me re-amped about using the Twitter platform again. You foresee this type of video response functionality being built natively into some of the more common email clients anytime in the near future. Would this be practical for someone like you who travels a lot and who has a lot of mass email volume to go through? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for your time. Travis, way to keep it tight. He like went bone thugs on that real fast. Um, I watched Straight Outta Compton last night. There was, a, there was a, oh my God, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so, so what I think is really interesting on that is I made, I wish Eric Kastner uh, was here right now. Let's show Kastner's uh, Twitter profile, at Kastner, K-A-S-T-N-E-R. Uh, Eric was the, developer that sat right next to me that helped me build up winelibrary.com and I made a prediction to him uh, in 2004 or five or six or seven that all email would be video in five to seven years. I'm glad we weren't doing the Ask Gary V show back then because boy that highlight, the low lights of this show, by the way I can't wait for the low lights in a couple years of all my wrong things in this because those are fun too. Um, not really. Uh, So I think the answer is no. I think that what people don't realize is most people don't want to be on camera. And this is a really interesting thing. Now, what's happening right now with everybody growing up in selfie culture and all these 15, 14, 13 year olds just owning this move, I do think that behavior is changing. And I do think that videos upside over a 15 to 30 year period, 15 to 30 years from now, 15 through 30 years from now, uh, is very high because I think we're training youngsters, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, to be more out, to be more in front of the camera. It's not this kind of thing anymore. So um, I, uh, I'm bullish on the concept of a, I do think email is ripe for a change uh, in the next generation. Uh, I think, you know, Gmail's gotten heavy, it started off lighter. I think there's some real opportunity. I do think when you look at Slack, and how people use that in companies to communicate. I think a version of texting, Twitter video, and email, the Frankenstein of that, eight, nine years from now, has a real shot. And then there's gonna be a technology we don't understand, like holograms, like Princess Leia pops up in Star Wars. I'd like that even better. I'd be like, yeah, I could use my hands. You know, it'd be great. So I think that, um, I think a lot of technology will come, um, and I do think there'll be change. I do think that video in email clients, like Gmail and Apple Mail, is gonna be smaller than you think. Um, because people don't like to go that route. It actually takes longer, and I think time is the biggest asset. I think people can type it out quicker than click, da da da. Um, so, uh, and I think we're writing less. You know, a lot more emojis, a lot, I mean, you know, these guys will probably laugh right now. I mean, <laughs> my emails are tight. <laughs> They're very much in the K, LOL, cool, go, yes, no. I mean, I'm keeping it tight. Uh, and so, I mean, when I write two or three sentences, people are like, whoa. So, um, so I think that uh, time is the biggest variable besides people's uh, non-want to be in picture form. I mean, think about how many people don't want to take pictures of themselves. They don't want to see themselves. That's a very big culture, underrated, especially for the generation that's in the workforce now. The younger generation, I think, will change that over time. Re- oh, Rue? Rue, Rue, Rue. Ru. Ru. I, I mean, I know him really well. I just, I, mean, I interact with him a lot. I just don't know if he pronounces it Rue. Rue asks, you don't talk much about Tumblr. Do you think it's losing relevance? Yes. 
You keep asking questions. <laughs> I mean, I don't, you know. Yes, I do think it's losing relevance. I think Tumblr lost its moment, which is tough for me because I was an early investor in Tumblr. I made a lot of money when it sold to Yahoo, but it's part of a bigger company that's selling media in a traditional way, even though it's Yahoo. Um, and I think that it lost to Instagram in the mobile translation, uh, much like many people did. Uh, it is still a very high rated app in the app store. If you look in the top 100, it's usually around number 90 to 110. Um, but I, uh, I do think it's losing relevance. I think there's a lot of people that love it. It's still a very big platform, but I don't see huge growth in it. I don't see it, uh, I think it's a, it's a niche now where a lot of creative people are doing their thing. It's a great creative outlet. A lot of people are doing their anonymous work on it. But then Snapchat came along and kind of created a world where, India, what's going on behind me? Nothing, I just said anonymous thing. I just, wow. Um, uh, what? No, no, you were laughing before. No, I wasn't. Okay, I'll have to watch that part of the show. <laughs> uh, watch the I, I think the show, um, I do think Tumblr's lost its momentum and would need to have some real uh, innovation to, uh, to get going again. So, yes, I don't talk about it a lot um, because it's not on top of mind. And it's a current show, right? Like, like this is going to always follow the path of what I think is most going on. Um, just want to thank everybody for watching the show. Uh, I realized over this weekend, a little bit over the break, of just how much this community means to me. Uh, really enjoy the, uh, the amount of people that have jumped out of Lurkerville um, and started commenting. It really means a lot to me. It is absolutely my oxygen in lieu of like, the financial aspects. Uh, you know, as many books as I sell of Ask Gary Vee, the time commitment doesn't work math-wise. And so I asked myself, what, what is it really? And I think it's our interaction. And I definitely think it's our interaction. And so thank you so much for a lot of people that jumped out over the weekend and said, I'm a lurker. Here's my comment on the latest show. Uh, question of the day. What do I want to know about? Um, Labor Day's coming up. It's so funny. These question days are coming harder because I really don't, know what I want to know. They become less self-serving from a data perspective. So, uh, question of the day. Uh, what is your favorite, <laughs> I guess that I'm going self-serving. What is your favorite football team? And what, after one preseason game, is the prediction for your team's record this year? Side note, I may change question of the day. As a matter of fact, I'm changing it right here on the spot. We're going improv. No more question of the day. This is it. This will be part of the equip. This is 132? This will be part of the quiz game one day. What episode did it go from question of the day to comment of the day? Please make your comment on the content that you just watched. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.